Clover developers, welcome to the Clover OAuth Expiring Tokens webinar. My name is Acelia. And I'm Tansaro. Today we're going to go over changes to Clover OAuth, new OAuth flows, a short demo, and then a summary to follow. So what's changing with Clover OAuth? The, the main change is that uh, we're going to switch to expiring tokens. As you may have noticed, our access tokens do not expire currently. So we are migrating to expiring tokens to improve security and to follow industry best practices. The new API access tokens will expire uh, and apps will need to refresh them using a refresh token. Uh, just note that this is only in North America today and uh, EMEA and Latin America are coming soon. What's not changing is the user flows for login, merchant picker, et cetera, and uh, device authentication is also not changing. So if your app is device only, this will not apply to you. Let's go over some terminology just so that we're on the same page. Uh, access tokens are the tokens that are used to access the Clover APIs. These will now switch to becoming uh, short-lived and they will expire. A refresh token is a token that you'll use to generate more access tokens. Uh, and these will also expire, but they will live for much longer. An authorization code, uh, as you may already know, because this is part of the current flow, uh, is a token that you'll receive uh, for the first half of the OAuth process. Uh, and you'll use this and exchange it for an access token. Client ID, which is also a current concept, is your uh, app's ID, also sometimes referred to as the app ID. And the client secret is a secret key that is assigned to your app by Clover. Uh, and this, again, is something that already exists currently. We're introducing a new concept of high trust and low trust apps. Um, high trust apps are apps that can store the client secret securely, um, such as uh, web apps with backends. Um, and this was previously referred to as response type code. So you may be familiar with that. Uh, if you currently use response type code, you are a high trust app. Uh, low trust apps are apps that don't have a way to secure a client secret uh, safely such as a mobile app or maybe a single page front end only web app or native desktop applications. These apps were previously res uh, referred to as response type token. Uh, and so if you use response type token currently, you are a low trust app. Now let's get into the flow for high trust apps. This is called the authorization code flow, which is a standard OAuth flow. Um, it's very similar to what we do today. Uh, and uh, you'll see here that the difference is the first endpoint is a V2 endpoint. So that will be the distinction. When you kick off OAuth, you'll be hitting this OAuth V2 authorized endpoint. Uh, you'll receive an authorization code back from Clover and you'll send it back to the back end again, a new V2 endpoint, OAuth V2 token, to exchange that for a new access token. Uh, at that point, you will get an access token and a refresh token now, um, and you will use the refresh token to do uh, to refresh your access token. Access tokens will provide you access to the Clover API, and refresh tokens will be used to refresh those access tokens when they expire. The refresh tokens are much uh, longer lived than the access tokens, and the access tokens will expire more quickly. Um, every time you refresh, you'll receive a new, uh, new access token and refresh token pair, both of them. And the refresh tokens are one-time use only. So once you use it, it becomes invalid, and you'll need to use the new one that is sent to you in the refresh process next time you want to refresh. 
Um, also note that it's okay to let your access tokens expire. Um, as a user is active, you'll want to keep refreshing your token, but once they become inactive, you can let the token expire. Uh, as long as you have the refresh token, you can use that refresh token to get a new access token even after the access token is expired. And that's why these refresh tokens are much longer lived. Um, if a refresh token is not needed, then you can use the no refresh token param uh, on the token endpoint, and then you will not get an, uh, a refresh token. You'll only get an access token. And this is useful because we do have limits in place for the number of uh, refresh tokens that you can have per uh, app merchant combination. So when you hit that limit, we will still allow you to create new refresh tokens, but the oldest refresh token will get deleted. So by using this no refresh token param, you can avoid hitting that limit. There are also uh, rate limits in place, so please avoid uh, excessively refreshing your token or refreshing your tokens way in advance. Uh, also, token expirations and character lengths can change in the future, so please do not hard code those. So now let's talk about low trust apps. This is what's currently in place, uh, what's called uh, the implicit flow, uh, also referred to as response type token. As you can see here, there's no auth code. We just get an access token at the end of the first call to the authorized endpoint. What we're migrating to is called uh, proof key for code exchange, uh, PKCE sometimes referred to as Pixie. Um, this is a variation of the auth code flow where uh, front-end apps can use this to uh, secure their OAuth exchange without using a client secret. There are two pieces to this. Uh, one is the code verifier, which is a unique random string that you'll have to generate every time you do OAuth. Uh, and the other piece is the code challenge, which is a hash representation of this code verifier random value. In the OAuth spec, uh, you can use multiple hash algorithms, but at Clover, we just support SHA-256 for now. We may introduce others in the future. So the new OAuth flow for low trust apps looks like this. You'll first generate that uh, code verifier and code challenge. You'll send the code challenge, which is the SHA-256 SHA version uh, to the Clover UI, and then we will store that and send back the authorization code as we do in the normal authorization code flow. You'll then uh, send a request to the token endpoint, like uh, which is the same as uh, high trust apps. Um, but instead of sending a client secret, you'll send the code verifier. We'll validate that code verifier on the back end, and if that checks out, we'll be we'll send back a access and refresh token, just like the other flow. And then from there, you'll need to refresh your tokens, uh, similar to the previous flow that we discussed. And these are the migration steps for apps that uh, exist currently that will need to migrate their legacy tokens to these new expiring tokens. There's an endpoint, uh, the migrate v2 endpoint, which is shown here, where you can exchange that token. Um, if you're a low trust app, you will need to do PKCE here as well. Um, and it's very similar to the authorization code flow. Once you get an authorization code, you'll hit that same uh, OAuth token endpoint and exchange for an access token and refresh token. And then you'll be in the new mode with the new tokens. Uh, once you migrate, the legacy token will become invalid.
There's one more component that changed uh, as part of this new OAuth flow, which is the left nav flow on um, the web dashboard. So as you may know, uh, on the left nav in the web dashboard, if a merchant installs your app, there will be a link to your app there. Uh, and this link currently, if a merchant clicks that, it'll go straight to the merchant picker, the Clover backend, and then redirect to your app at the site URL with an auth code. So uh, today, the first call that comes to your app will already have an auth code. This is going to change. Um, with the new OAuth flow, that first call will be to your app directly and your app will have to initiate the OAuth flow from the beginning by calling the authorized endpoint. You can configure uh, an alternate path where this link will take the merchant in your app, uh, and we'll demo that later. But um, basically, you'll receive a call with the merchant ID, and you can decide whether you want to continue in the legacy flow or uh, use the new flow, the V2 endpoint, uh, for this merchant. And that allows you to do controlled rollouts or feature flags or anything like that so that you don't have to have a immediate cutover. It also uh, supports PKCE, which is another important reason why we did this. Um, so if you're a low trust app and need to do PKCE, you need to receive the call first and generate these tokens, uh, these codes rather, before you initiate the OAuth process. Okay, I will pass to Celia with the demo. Okay. So let's see what's changed starting from the developer dashboard. As for web apps, we still need a site URL, but we also have an alternate launch path as well. So the launch path in my app is just an app route, for example. And as we navigate to the left nav, we see the alternate launch path URL on the bottom of the screen. Once clicked, we're then routed to V2 Authorize and then the landing page of our app. For demo purposes, we can see the access token, expiration, and the refresh token. To see the refresh token in action, we go ahead and paste the necessary fields to the body. We send, and we now have our new access token pair. So this will happen in the back end of your app, of course. So to summarize, we're going to be migrating to short-lived access tokens. Tokens should be refreshed using refresh tokens migration endpoint to, you'll need to use the migration endpoint to convert legacy tokens. This is only available in North America today. EMEA and Latin America will be coming soon. New apps should start to use the new low wealth flow immediately. Existing apps should begin migration as soon as possible and migration should be completed by August 1st of 2024. So if you have any more questions, please use the comment section below to let us know. Thank you for joining.